Hey Year 12 and welcome to the next episode of Mathematical Mo Brain Movies. You'll have to hang out for a few moments till you get the corny joke, so keep watching. Um, so far in trigonometry we've only looked at right angle triangles, so ones that have got the little um, symbol for a right angle in the corner, and we've used Pythagoras, and we've used Sokotoa to perform various calculations, depending on what we know and what we're trying to calculate, um, we've chosen which one of those particular rules to apply. So, now we're looking at, not right angle triangles, but, help, we don't have right angles. If you're not on a right angle triangle, I guess you must be a wrong angle triangle. Yep, that's right, we're now looking at wrong angle triangles. Not right angle triangles, but wrong angle triangles. Of course, they're not actually known by that name. They're actually called obtuse angle triangles, but there's your corny joke for the video. So we're not looking at right angle triangles now, we're looking at what we call obtuse angle triangles. So this is a new part to this topic on um, trigonometry. When we're talking about an obtuse angle triangle, you can see we're talking about a triangle that's got an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, like this particular one here. And over the next few lessons, you'll be introduced to these rules, the sine rule and the cosine rule, to perform um, various calculations. In this video, we're just going to kind of get our head around um, what we mean by obtuse angles and how to perform um, various calculations of sine, cos and tan um, with obtuse angles. So, of course, here's just a little reminder. An obtuse angle is an angle between 90 and 180. So it's bigger than 90, and obviously the ones less than 90 are acute, but it's um, not as not greater than 180, so 90 to 180 degrees. So here's a little reminder. Up here, if we've got an angle theta, then this here would be equal to 180 minus theta. Since these two are all the way across, this is a, um, a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. So that means if this theta was 30, then this one would have to be 180 minus 30, which would be 150. If this, if theta was 80, this would have to be 100. If theta was 10, it would have to be 170. If theta was 70, it would have to be 110, because these need to add up to give 180, the full um, straight angle. So we call those angles, theta and 180 minus theta, we call them supplementary angles, because they add up to 180. So let's now have a look about, at um, our sine, cos and tan ratios for acute angles and for obtuse angles. What we find is that acute angles, which is what you've been working with so far, when we evaluate sine, cos and tan, can you see that? Not really. When we evaluate sine, cos and tan for acute angles, angles less than 90, we find that we only get positive values. So let's have a look. 70 is an example of an acute angle, and I type in sine 70, and I get a positive number. I'm just rounding there. Type in cos 70, I get a positive number. Type in tan 70, I get a positive number. We're going to start now working with obtuse angles, and we're going to find that this isn't the case sine is going to still be positive, and you can remember because sine starts with s, still starts with s. So sine stays or is still positive, but we're going to find that cos and tan give me negative values. So let me show you what I mean using an example. 120 degrees is an example of an obtuse angle because it's between 90 and 180, so let's give it a go. Sine of 120 first gives me 0 0.866 or 0 0.87. So you can still still see that sine is positive. So sine is still positive, a positive value. But now when we put in cos, you can see I get negative 0 0.5 there. So I've got a negative answer here. And I'm going to get the same um, a negative value when I type in tan. So again, you can see that I've got a negative value here at the front. So I end up with these rules that um, for acute angles, sine, cos and tan, all positive, nothing to remember. But for obtuse angles, it's only sine that stays positive, cos and tan are negative. So let's have a look at what this is going to mean for us in terms of questions. 
I've just put the little rule over the side here so that I can refer to it as we do these questions. So this question says, decide if theta is acute, obtuse, or could be either in each case. And I'm given these um, different examples here to have a look at. What I'm going to do is look at the sign in front of each of these numbers, see whether it's positive or negative, and use my rule to decide whether theta is obtuse, acute, or could be either. So let's have a look. 10 theta is 1.19. I can see that this is a positive value. When do I get positive values for 10? Well, I only get positive values when 10 is um, when theta is an acute angle, you can see here, if theta was obtuse, I'd get a negative. So I know that theta here is acute. Cos of theta, this is a positive value. So I say to myself, in which case do I get a positive value of theta for um, uh, positive value of cos theta? Again, it's in this particular case when theta is acute. I look at sine theta again. This is positive here. I have a look at my um, little rule over here. When do I get a positive value for sine theta? Well, I get one here, but I do also get one here. So I can't actually tell. This could be acute or it could be obtuse. I can't actually tell here because both would give me positive answers. Cos theta in this case gave me a negative value. When's cos theta negative? It's negative when the angle is obtuse. 10 theta is negative. When is 10 theta negative? It's negative down here when my angle is obtuse. This one, it's another positive value here. When is sine theta positive? Well, again, it could be when theta is acute or obtuse. So I'm going to give you a few moments now to just have a go at this question for yourself. Just the same type of question. Decide in each case if theta is acute, obtuse, or could be either. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this quite quickly. I know off the top of my head, and I'm just going to do them um, pretty straightforward. I know that sine, when sine's positive, it could be either. So I'm going to say this one and this one, they could be either. It could be, oops, can't spell. It could be either um, an acute or an obtuse angle in each of these cases. I know that cos theta, when cos theta is positive, it's acute. I know that when cos theta is negative, it's obtuse. I know that when tan theta is positive, it's acute. I know that when tan theta is negative, it's obtuse. So hopefully you got those right. Otherwise, maybe go back and re-watch that part of the video. All right, the next thing you're going to have to be able to do is evaluate sine, cos, and tan when you're given obtuse angles. This is actually really straightforward and you just do everything exactly as you normally would. So just like you saw me do before, you literally just put it into your calculator as you would normally do. Sine 130 gives me 0 0.766. Cos 100 gives me negative 0.174 rounding up, 10, 150 gives me negative 0.577, okay? Nothing too tricky there, nothing new or different. Okay, here's your second question to have a go at. Give this particular one a go. All right, how about, um, hopefully you work this one out. Again, I'll type it in, sine 125. Oops, you can't see that again. Sine 125, 0 0.819, cos 105, negative 0 0.25, I'm going to round that up to 9, and 10 of 160. Everything's just plugged in exactly as normal here, so nothing too tricky. All right, final um, explanation for this video. And this is where we have to go back the other way. So in this case, you're told what the value of sine theta is and you're asked to work out, well, what is theta? So you're asked to calculate theta. If theta is obtuse, so if you know that theta is obtuse, you're asked to um, work out what theta must be. 
Now, in these questions, you're going to do the inverse function as normal, and then you're going to add or subtract from 180 to work out the angle. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's do um, sine theta. If you're just doing this as a normal question, then to calculate theta, you do the inverse sine. You guys have already been doing this before. So you do the inverse sine, type it into your calculator. Inverse sine um, of 0.8081. And it gives me, I'm just going to put that into, gives me 53 degrees and 54 minutes. I'm just going to round it to 54 um, degrees. Now, I'm told that theta is obtuse. Well, 54 degrees is not obtuse. So I'm going to have to decide, do I need to add or subtract this from 180 to get, um, or to 180 to get an obtuse angle? Well, in this case, I'm going to have to do 180 minus 54 to get what theta actually is when it's obtuse, since we've been told it's obtuse. So I'm going to do 180 minus 54. And that gives me 126 degrees. I wouldn't possibly do 180 plus 54 because 234 degrees is too big. Remember, these angles have got to be in between 90 and 180, okay, to be obtuse. So I'm going to do 180 minus 54 to get my obtuse angle. Let's have a look at this next one. Again, to work out theta, I'm just going to do inverse cos of negative 0.3576. So on my calculator, inverse cos of negative 0.3576, press equals. Here you can see it gives me 110, oh, turn it off to get it rounded. So you can see it gives me 110 degrees and 57 minutes, which I'm just going to around to 111 degrees. Now you can see that this time, this has spat out an obtuse angle directly. So this is already obtuse. If I get an already obtuse angle, I don't need to do anything further. So I don't need to add or subtract from um, 180 because my angle that I've calculated is obtuse directly. Let's have a look now at this last one. 10 of theta. Again, just in my normal way, theta. I'll do the inverse 10 of minus 2.4192. Uh, here, inverse 10 minus 2.4192 and it gives me negative, again round it to my nearest degree, is negative 68 degrees. Now, again you can see that 68 degrees or negative 68 degrees clearly isn't an obtuse angle. So I need to turn this into the obtuse angle. Well, I'm going to have to do 180 minus 68 in order to get this to be my obtuse angle. So I'm going to do 180 minus 68. Gives me 112 degrees. So you can see that you have to be a little bit flexible with these questions. If you get an answer that's not um, the obtuse angle, like we did in these cases, you need to add or subtract 180 degrees to get the obtuse angle. Sometimes you'll get it directly. So you've got to be a little bit flexible. All right, here's your turn now. Last thing for you to do in this video, have a go at these three questions and see if you can work out the answers. All right, hopefully you're in all right. Let's um, do it now. Again, we're told that theta is obtuse, so I need between 90 and 180 as my answers. I do the inverse of 0 0.99 here, again, on my calculator, inverse sine of 0.99. I'm just going to round it to the nearest um, degree, so this is rounds to 82 degrees. You can see 82 degrees is not obtuse, so I'm going to need to do 180 minus 82 to get the obtuse one. 180 minus 82 gives me 98 degrees. There's my obtuse angle. Let's have a look at cos. Again, inverse sine of 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, inverse sine, whoops, sorry, this is meant to be cos, inverse cos 
So that's cos there, negative 0 0.5. So let's do it again. Inverse cos, negative 0.5 gives me 120. Okay, this is an obtuse angle already, so I don't need to do anything further. Last one here. Beta is going to be the inverse tan of negative 0 0.7. I type it in. Inverse tan, negative 0.7 gives me negative 35 degrees if I round it. Again, this isn't an obtuse angle, so I'm going to need to do 180 minus 35 degrees to get my obtuse angle 145. Okay, that's the end of the video. I know this can seem like a slightly weird topic and slightly confusing. Once you actually um, get into using this information, when you're using the sine and cosine rule, It'll actually make a little bit more sense than it possibly does um, in this video as to why we're doing it. But for the moment, obviously give um, the questions that I allocate you your best shot and all the best.